um, we've again abstracted the sample names, right? And then we run our shell command, right? And after that, we want to run shovel as our next process. But see how we've defined our input. So our input, R1, is rules output dot R1 here. And R2 is our rules output 2, which we capture here. Okay? And our output, which we call final there, uh, will be this file, right? Again, abstracting our root directory, whatever. And this is the shell command that we want to execute. This is the shovel command we want to execute. So we provide our output directory. Uh, we abstract our sample names. Uh, we provide our input R1 and R2 is our input R2, which we get in from here. So that's a two-step workflow in SnakeMake. You know, that's just going to make your work a little bit easier and have less headache. Okay? And you can run that over and over. And it doesn't matter, wherever you get a new project where you want to run this process, a new data set, you simply run the same. It doesn't matter the name of the files. You don't have to specify. That will just be the script you're going to put into your container or in your working directory. And you can execute this via Docker. For example, you can install Shovel on Docker. Maybe you'll get to see how we can do that. And I have a fully reproducible uh, workflow. Uh, and that one that I can share with Kibet, uh, all I can put on GitHub and uh, allow access to it. And you see a lot of these types of scripts. Yes, Khadija? Um, just a naive question. Yes. So, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of a well-scripted workflow that can have all this in one. Different inputs, different outputs. What's the advantage of making it over having a, a self-scripted function to me? Um, it depends on your skill level. Yeah. Bash is fantastic, but I can bite you. Writing a really safe Bash command can, become, can be really difficult. You know, taking care of uh, errors, what happens when your script doesn't execute. You know, um, I'll, sh I'll show later on that, you know, with SnakeMake, uh, you can cache your errors, you can have uh, logs, and so on and so forth. You can do the same thing with, uh, uh, with, with, with the Bash. It's just that it might take a little bit more time. Uh, and to really write a nice, good, safe bash script is not trivial. OK? It, it, it's really not trivial. So again, it's um, the same thing we were weighing, you know, uh, ease of use, richness, versus you know, what you want to do. OK? So SnakeMake um, just made that, in my opinion, really easy to write than bash. If I was to write these two processes in bash, I think this, to me, does look more easy. And it's more portable. And two, I don't have to really worry where I run this script. Whether it's on my local PC, it will run. If I take it to the HPC, it will run maybe with minimal uh, uh, alterations. Okay? All I need to ensure is that uh, maybe snake make is my path, and so on and so forth. And uh, I got the same uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of uh, directory uh, structure. Okay? Uh, maybe. Um, uh, John will show us how we can do something similar using uh, another workflow like Nextflow, for example, and how uh, it abstracts the same concepts. The concepts don't change. You've got processes, you've got input, you've got output, uh, you want to cache logs, and so on and so forth. So it's the same thing, yeah, overall. Uh, so here, Phil is illustrated for us sort of a, a three step snake make. Um, in this case, I think um, it's just the same thing we had, but then. Uh, he's introduced something, um, sort of uh, one rule to rule them all. Okay, so you got a rule all. Okay, and the rule all, uh, what what is going to do is that the input is you know uh, this expansion here, and the you know rule dir is going to cache all that, and. Um, 
you can see that, I mean, it's the same thing here. We had the BBDAC uh, um, uh, script um, and the shell and uh, input and, uh, and output and, and so on and so forth, right? And we've just abstracted all our inputs uh, uh, from uh, the previous uh, way uh, that we had written them. Okay? So in here, we, you know, we had specified our root DIR and so on, and we can abstract that into a rule uh, that uh, sort of uh, caches that for us. Okay? Here. Okay? Which uh, now specifies our, uh, our, our input uh, command. So let's see. Yeah. So uh, again, I, I think we've always done this uh, one way, directly or indirectly. And the way this is working is that internally, our SnakeMake uh, is converting our Snake file into what you call a directed acyclic graph. How many of us have covered graphs, graph theory? We know about acyclic graphs, directed graphs. John? Yeah. Just, just, yeah, go ahead and explain to us maybe what, what do you understand by that, those terminologies. So in that example, you see that uh, I, I can label them as nodes where the, the yeah. sort of rectangular nodes. Yeah. Yeah, you know the direction. Yeah. 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 So that's what has happened. And often when you're thinking about bioinformatics workflows, uh, you more always have these sort of uh, processes. So you can think of it as a graph. Okay? So here, you know, we got uh, some couple of steps, you know, download a genome and compress. So often it'll be like compressed, uncompressed, index your genome, uh, download your data. This could come from wherever, map your reads. Uh, index your genome using SAM tools, um, you know, import SAM tools, uh, sort, uh, index, sorted, uh, create your pileup, and you make your VCF, your variants, right? So you can write a workflow, and indeed, I think SnakeMake does also output for you uh, the directed graph, if you ask it. And that's really nice. You may want to share that with your reviewers and say, you know, this is the workflow, and uh, these were the steps. And sometimes, depending on the complexity of your workflow, it's always nice to have a visual uh, interpretation uh, or a visual cue to see uh, what exactly is happening under the hood. Okay, so yeah, practical one. We're able to access the internet, aren't we? Yeah, so we could go to, I did get this here. Um, I'll just ask you to go through here. Uh, so what Phil uh, wanted us to do was just to um, make use of materials that are already available. There are a number of tutorials and explanations. Um, so if we can just go through it. I've done most of the talking to cover this bit, but it's nice if you can go through it. So if you just go to your browser, and let me try to borrow this a bit. I don't know whether this is visible from here. Essentially, you can just Google Snake Make. And uh, if, you go, if you Google SnakeMaker, uh, you go to the tutorial here, the docs, the documentation, and um, go to the basics and uh, an example workflow. And um, there's all this. Uh, this is what we were really going through. And I think there should be SnakeMaker installed in your directory. You can create a directory. Uh, what I didn't do was, I don't know whether we have files that we can work with. Um, but we, I think, I don't know whether I can maybe provide that or we can download some files. Yeah, we have uh, some test data uh, because uh, they are missing here. I can try and generate some test data for us. Uh, I'll put them in the whatever flow. Should be fine. Yeah. But essentially, um, the idea was to go through this tutorial here. Um, 
and it's what really I've gone through. And you can see at the end of the day, uh, once you understand all that, you'll find um, the, the full script um, over here. What I've not provided, uh, maybe I'll provide you with the genome.fa and fastq. That's what I've not provided. But if you have some of your own, feel free to make use of them. But in the meantime, I'll try and uh, generate that. 